So uh, welcome, Dr. Gorin, uh, Infection Control Special uh, Physician uh, for St. Mary's and which other hospital? I'm at uh, Nazareth, which is also part of Trinity uh, Health. And I, I do work at Jefferson Northeast, mostly the Torresdale branch. And you were going to, uh, he, Dr. Gorin has been our consulting uh, specialist throughout this past year. And we've been uh, very pleased and honored to have him uh, give us a lot of support and understanding of, of what's been going on with COVID as well as now the vaccination. So at this point, I'll turn it over to you, uh, Dr. Gorin. All right. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't sure what I would take in questions or what. You want me to just give a little uh, update on what's going on with COVID? If you would give the update what's going on with COVID and then talk somewhat about the vaccinations. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also um, how things have been uh, from your perspective of Chandler Hall, but also Lower Bucks County. All right. Absolutely. Okay. So, with regards to Bucks County, as you, I, if you, you know, I would have put a couple of slides together. I apologize, but um, as as you may know, and looking looking at the news, while we hit a terrible uh, milestone a couple of days ago with over five hundred thousand people uh, who have died of this disease, um, most of the country is experiencing a, a, a terrific drop in disease. Uh, there's a, been a like a, a 40, 50% drop in hospitalizations. The, the number of new cases is dropping dramatically. It's, it's, it's went up over the Christmas holidays. And since about the second week in January, it's come right back down again. It doesn't mean we're not experiencing and I'm still hearing of cases. We're still seeing something, but for instance, St. Mary's, which was about 130, 40 cases at the peak of this is now down running between somewhere between 30 and 40 cases in the hospital at any time with about anywhere from one to 10 uh, admissions and uh, not that many in the ICU on ventilators who are critically ill. So there's a clear improvement now. And, and one of the big questions that everybody's asked, oh, and I, I, I should mention that in Bucks County, we're also very, we're down. I mean, some of the data in Bucks County, they say that when you're below a hundred cases over a two week, uh, week period, uh, for a hundred for, for hundred thousand population, that's when things are quieting down and you can start to open up. Now we've been as high as three or four hundred, but now we're down to about we're we're down to about uh, one hundred and fifty cases, and we're getting closer to a hundred. So things are really slowing down, and the big question is why. That's the question everybody's been asking me, and the answer I have is it's it's there's multiple things going on here. Uh, one of the things is that people, I think, are taking seriously the use of, of face masks and social distancing and staying out of large crowds. I think people are finally starting to realize that that's a, an intelligent, safe way to protect ourselves from the virus. Also, when it, there's an estimated, what, 30 million people, almost 30 million people in this country who have been diagnosed with, with COVID. Uh, those people, uh, if you have, you take 30 million people, you can multiply, some epidemiologists think we can multiply that by four times to get the actual number of people who've actually had the disease but weren't diagnosed. For instance, they weren't symptomatic, they didn't get tested. Um, and, that, and that plus people who are starting to get vaccinated, again, it's a small percentage of the population, but it's going up all the time, uh, means that probably somewhere about a third to a fourth of the population may already be immune. And in some, it, while that's not, Classic herd immunity, um, they'd expect 60 to 70% to be immune. What, what it means is we're getting less transmission. So if there's less transmission, less people are getting it and the numbers are gonna drop. And, and uh, that's the other probable reason why this is going on is, is, the, is, the, is the amount of people who've got it. And then the other weird thing is changes in environment and climate. I mean, as to, uh, right now we're not warm and much of the country isn't warm, but some other parts of the country are getting warmer. And, and viruses just have a very, all infections have a very strange uh, um, uh, cycle that we don't really understand. For instance, if you look at the flu, the great flu of, of the early 20th century, 1918, 1919, there was, a, there was a big peak in the spring, a little peak in the spring, and then it, there was a huge peak in the fall of 2018 when millions and millions of people died. And then it kind of just went away and it came back in the spring and then it just went away. 
and it showed up a couple of years later as the yearly flu. And they didn't do anything. They didn't have any medicine. They didn't have any treatment. Maybe a lot of people got exposed. We don't know. Maybe it had to do with herd immunity. But there's, there's just some very strange things that happened. So it may be a confluence of good things. But the, the good thing about this is that but right now we have a way out. And that way out is going to be the vaccine. Uh, the two vaccines that we currently have, the Pfizer and the Moderna, have been shown to be safe and effective. They can prevent a disease 94, 95% of the time. Two studies have just been published. Uh, the, well, one has just been published in New England Journal of Medicine, the Israeli study. They, they did um, 600,000 people in each arm, 600,000 with, 600,000 without the vaccine, and clearly showed that this vaccine in real world times will prevent disease. And not only will they prevent disease, they'll keep people from going in the hospital and dying. There, there were a few people who did die who got the vaccine, uh, but the fact that those people all had significant comorbidities. Uh, they, they had other major medical problems that, 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 that the vaccine contributed to their demise, just like you see with flu. The people who die with influenza every year are, tend to be the older and sicker people whose, whose underlying conditions get exacerbated by the disease, not so much by the disease itself. So, so we have that. And also that vaccine seems to be very effective against the British strain. You've heard about the variant from Britain. Um, it seems to be more contagious, maybe a little bit more virulent, uh, but it seems to be our vaccines seem to work against that strain. Also some data came out from England, same thing. They did healthcare workers and they did an older population, people over 60 and found a marked decrease. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but they found a marked decrease in the number of people getting sick and the number of people getting in the hospital and the, and the mortality. And this included the British strain. This was included, also included the British strain. So despite the fact that we have some variants, the vaccines we have are really, really very good. Um, both vaccines at this time require two doses. The Pfizer vaccine uh, is uh, four weeks, uh, three weeks apart. The Moderna vaccine is four weeks apart. And the reason for that is that's the way they studied it. Um, you, it, it, most of the studies are now showing you get some partial immunity after the first shot, but the second shot really kicks things up and, and you get about a 90 to 95% immunity after two weeks after that second shot. So that's what we're aiming for. And the key thing as you're hearing is it doesn't, totally prevent the illness, but what it's going to do is prevent us from getting sick. So if it just means you're going to get a little cold or a little flu for a couple of days, I can live with that. What we want to do is keep people out of the hospital, keep them off ventilators and keep them from dying. Um, the, the vaccines themselves are extremely safe. We've given this vaccine now to, I heard over 60 million people in this country. I've gotten at least one dose and there have been no major serious side effects. You may have heard in the news about several people whose platelets dropped after it. And there was one celebrated case, uh, a physician in Florida who died of this low platelet condition, thrombocytopenia. But again, the, the incidence of this is extremely low and it, and it still may or may not have anything to do with the vaccines, but there's been virtually nothing else. The only reason not to get this vaccine is if you have an allergy to any of the components of the vaccine, or you had an allergic reaction to one of the shots. Other than that, pretty much everybody can get it. Uh, if you've had COVID, you can get it. In fact, they encourage people to get it because sometimes people who have had a mild infection or asymptomatic infection have minimal immunity. So by getting the vaccine, you juice that up a little bit. Um, people who are on immunosuppressive medications like uh, we treat for rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis, some of these biologicals that suppress your immune system. Um, they are, it's perfectly safe to give the vaccine. These vaccines are not alive. They can't take over your body. They're killed vaccines. Uh, the Moderna and the uh, Pfizer have a little piece of RNA in the vaccine that's coated with a little oily coat. And the RNA is, is, the, is what codes for the protein on the outside of the COVID that, that attaches to your cells. And so when that gets into you, when you eject that RNA, it, it, your, your body uses it to make the, the protein, which goes on the outside of the muscle cell and your immune system attacks that and, become, and you become immune. And that's why people get side effects. But that RNA eventually is just recycled. It goes away. It can't get into your genes. It won't turn you into a zombie. 
Uh, there's no reason why why uh, people, uh, uh, pregnant women shouldn't get it because we know that some pregnant women have severe complications from COVID. And there is no theoretic reason why this vaccine should affect uh, childbirth or the um, or your ability to have kids. Um, and there's, there's ex animal data also that supports the fact that it's completely safe in childbirth. Although there weren't many women in the studies, I, most people, even the WHO, who said don't do it is now saying it's it's okay, speak to your doctor, use your conscience. But if it was my daughter, I would certainly tell her to get the vaccine. I think it's perfectly safe and I'd rather see her do it that way. Uh, patients who are on chemotherapy can get this vaccine. The question is how well will it work, but it won't hurt anybody. So, I mean, this vaccine can be given to pretty much everybody. People talk about autoimmune diseases. Um, and the only, the only thing to worry about is these allergic reactions. And they're, they're also extremely rare, like four cases out of a million. And we know how to handle those things. If you get a little re react, we give you Benadryl. If it's more severe, they give you a little epinephrine. Nobody's died of those things and they're very unusual. So this is an incredibly safe vaccine. There's no reason to fear this. The side effects usually occur. They're worse after the second shot. They're worse in younger people, as they say. Um, but normally it's just a little fever, headache, um, muscle aches and pains. Uh, and, and, and that's it. And, and stiffness and, and muscle aches and pains and, and 36 to 48 hours later, it's gone like that. Mine, I got a little aching the first time. Second time I woke up, I was pretty stiff. I took some Tylenol and got home that night after work. I was a little tired, laying the couch, got a little chills, went to bed early, woke up the next day. I was fine. And at least I knew my immune system was working. Another interesting sidelight is apparently uh, you can get some swollen glands in the side that you're injected. And so uh, uh, women who have had mammography have seen swollen glands and may have had false positives. And so they're now saying you should wait four to six weeks after your vaccine if you're going to have a mammogram. And I think most of the people are doing it will, will ask of that as well. So it shouldn't be a big problem. Um, so as I said, these, these vaccines are really safe and they really are our way out of here. There's no other way we're gonna get out of this. And I just think about what would have happened had we had this outbreak 10 years ago instead of that uh, flu that we had, which was widespread, but, but not very lethal for most people. And we would nowhere be in this position. So when, I, when people start getting upset about not, not having the vaccine fast enough, I keep saying, Man, just hang on. <laughs> this is this is like putting a lander on Mars. I'm telling you, this is just miraculous that we were able to get this get this vaccine as fast as we got it. Um, and so so basically, that's it. Now we may have the J and J vaccine. There should get approval tomorrow. That's a single dose vaccine. Um, it has not been as effective uh, as as the other two have. However. Um, the people who have gotten it have not gotten horribly ill. Again, it goes back to the idea that we're, we're keeping people safe and keeping people out of the hospital. If this turns into some kind of yearly thing that we have to deal with, we'll deal with it. Uh, we want to get away from where we are right now. So right now, PA is still in the 1A phase. That means you're doing people over 65, uh, younger people who have serious illnesses, diabetes, high, high blood pressure, heart disease, things like that. Healthcare workers, first line, and uh, and long term care facilities, and I'm happy to say you guys have uh, every pretty much everybody, uh, all, all your uh, many of your uh, residents, and hopefully more of your staff are getting it. They uh, I, and I hear there there is a certain there is a reticence about this, which I guess it, I understand because of other social social things, but I, they're really this vaccine is fabulous. It's just I mean. If, if something bad was going to happen, we'd know about it by now. There's millions of cases around the world and 60 million here, hundreds of millions in other places. Um, and the idea is, so, so let me finish up. So, and then I'll take the question. So you heard about the variants. That's what people are saying. What do we do about these variants? Uh, are they going to be a problem? Are they going to take over? Are we going to get sick again? We know that certain people can get reinfected. It's a small percentage of the population. And most people who get reinfected, it's been months out and they're not very ill. But the variants occur because all viruses mutate. Every time their RNA replicates, there may be one little base change, if you're all familiar with RNA. And, that, and that's sometimes all you need to make a mutation. 
If you're in a situation where millions and billions of virus particles and trillions of virus particles are replicating all the time, you can imagine how quickly those things can mount up. If you're a virus in a population where your 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 RNA has had multiple mutations, and one of those mutations makes the your spike protein, the one that attaches to your cells, a little bit more stable or hooks up to it a little bit more. Um, that means that you've got an advantage over all the other viruses in that area. And pretty soon you're going to take over because you've got, you're more efficient in your ability to infect people. And if we can get people, not only get people vaccinated and bring down the number of susceptibles, we're going to shut down that replication as much as we possibly can. And, and we're going to make this less likely to keep happening. It does look as though some of our vaccines are at least partially effective against some of these variants, which aren't very common right now. Now there's a new one in California and a new one in New York. And frankly, I don't know that much about them. I, there hasn't been that much information out about them. But I do believe there's gonna be some partial immunity and both uh, Pfizer and Moderna have said very clearly they can make a new vaccine in a couple of weeks. They just tweak the RNA, get the thing going, and and they, it takes longer to get it out, we may need another shot, say in the fall, we may need a booster to pick up some of these variants, but there's no reason to expect that we can't get it. The big problem, of course, is the supply right now and getting it to people. I think it's been fairly chaotic. Um, I, 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 I don't want to be critical of the state of the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but I do think the, the system here, compared to what I hear from other cases, has been fairly chaotic and not very helpful and, and people are waiting on vaccine and we're not getting it. But uh, uh, the, the, the current administration is really cranking it out. I heard Biden say today, uh, regardless of your politics, that, that they've given 50 million doses since he's been in office. And I agree, there was very few and now we're up to 66 last time I checked, 66 million. So I, I think more is coming. I, but I do think that until we get more information about these variants, we've got to kill, still keep wearing our masks. we got to still socially distance. But warmer weather will come, please, God. <laughs> I'm sick of winter. And, and we'll be able to get outside a little bit. I was sitting outside with my neighbors for uh, half an hour today. we all been vaccinated and we sit in a big circle on the, in the middle <laughs> on the street. I live in Center City and, and just talking and be just it's been nice to be social with somebody. Um, so but I, I so there there's there. I don't have all the answers. I can't say for sure. As Yogi Berra said, predicting anything is hard, especially the future. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm very heartened by the fact that they're, they're coming down. The, the cases are coming down now and the vaccine is going up. And I and I and I really think that's going to make a big difference going forward. When can we stop wearing masks? I don't know. Dr. Fauci says next year. Uh, I don't know. But I, I do think things are going to lighten up a bit. And, and the hospitals are all talking about opening up a little bit more, letting more visitors in. I know you guys have to wait for the state to tell you what to do. But if things keep going, uh, it may it may be quicker than we think. I, I don't want to predict anything. Um, I don't play the stock market and I don't make these predictions because <laughs> I don't know. But but I, I really think this I'm, I'm very optimistic about the way things are going. I'm hopefully optimistic. And um, that's really the latest. I, I think I've got everything. If there's any questions, I can certainly try to cover them as best I can. I have one. Sure. Um, where do we get it? I haven't even. Aye, 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 aye. Well, all you can do is, 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 you know, go onto the state website, I mean, the Department of Health website and, and get yourself in line, go on St. Mary's website. Um, I, I hear rumors that different pharmacies are having it, but it's not clear. Somebody told me that I think CVS or I heard, up yes, there is yeah. going yeah. to have it. But again, supplies are really constrained and it's really hard to get it. That's the big, the second biggest question I get asked is, how can I, my wife get it? I got it. How can I get it for my wife? My wife was very lucky. She, um, there, there was a company in Philadelphia called, called Philadelphia Fights COVID. It was a group of young people who mm -hmm. put together a, 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 a package to do it. The city supported them. 
She signed up. She got the vaccine. She went to the convention center. She said it was very professionally done. And uh, two weeks later, we found out they had gone private and were trying to sell the information. And uh, the city yanked them. And we were now panic stricken. When was she going to get it? But fortunately, the city of Philadelphia um, kicked in and took care of it for her in another professional way, although things are still it's still hard to come by here. I wish I had good answers for any everybody as to how to get this virus, uh, how to get this vaccine. I know how to get the virus. That's not hard. Uh, the vaccine is the hard one, but it's coming and more is coming and and just, you know, just hang on. And the good news is if you're working at Chandler Hall, you've got most of the employees back, many of the employees vaccinated, most of the, the residents vaccinated. And again, I, I'll say, you know, and I, you asked me to do this, I have been nothing but impressed with the way you have handled it. I'm sorry I haven't been on your the calls lately. Uh, I'll try to get on one tomorrow. I have some time. Uh, but I, you, you guys have done an absolutely magnificent job. And, and so have many of the other uh, uh, long-term care facilities in the, in the area. Uh, um, and I know Dr. Shah and, uh, uh, and everybody else has done a really terrific job. And uh, um, I don't know, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm so pleased. I watched how they're giving the vaccines at St. Mary's and what an organized, how organized they've been. And their big problem is how to get all these people and they have thousands of people signed up and they only have so much vaccine. So we just got to hang on and just spring is coming and so is more vaccine. <laughs> Good news. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, uh, I, you know, again, I, I, I tend to be an optimist, but uh, you know, I, I can't be sure. And I know there's these variants we have to be concerned about. So that's why everybody's just got to take it easy, wear their mask, do the right thing, and we'll get through this. Allison, you had a question? Yeah, I have yes. Oh, oh. sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I did. Um, because uh, the vaccine, I forget which one had to be really frozen, uh, but that's not really my question. My question is, um, does weather have anything to do with, with um, the disease itself? Well, I mean, is it yes, easier yes, to- Yes and no, yes and no. Um, well, in terms of freezing, I'll say that Pfizer has just applied to have their emergency authorization changed. They feel now that they don't need that minus 80 refrigerator anymore. They feel they have data to support the fact that a, a minus 20 refrigerator, which most pharmacies do have. They don't, you know, a lot of pharmacies went out and bought these really ultra cold uh, freezers. Uh, but now the minus 30, minus 40 is pretty common for storing specimens and other things. And that we have that. So it's going to make distribution of the Pfizer vaccine much, much easier now. So that's one thing. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? Well, uh, just as far as contagion, oh. is it easier to, to, to get this in warmer weather? Well, all right. So one thing, uh, one thing I should have mentioned about the vaccines is the Astra, the the J and J vaccine actually looked at this and found that people were less contagious. We didn't have that information with the other two. We expect people to be less contagious, but that that data is also still coming now, and hopefully we'll get that as time goes on. But you could see from Israel and UK, it's really dropping. Uh, the number of people who got it. Yeah, viruses depend on that. When you're in the winter, it's drier. These particles stay in the air longer. You have less humidity. Most people are inside. They're not outside. Uh, they're in areas of poor ventilation, and it's much easier to get uh, viruses that way. But viruses go all times of year, and we had an we had an uptake in the summertime, even in, in cold weather areas. So it's not entirely Due to, to, to the weather, we can clearly see when there's a dense enough number of people with it, we're going to spread it even if we're, you know, if you're bellying up to somebody in a bar, doesn't matter what the temperature is like outside. Um, but, but clearly, being in the warmer weather should have an advantage for us too. We're going into a time when, again, people will be able to get outside, have more social activities outside. I mean, all the restaurants are being terribly creative. You know, they've got these, in, in Center City, they've got these booths up. People are standing there in 25 degree weather with heat lamps on them and sitting there without their coats on. It's really quite remarkable. Um, and more restaurants have opened up than shut down. I mean, there, there's new restaurants opening up, which I find remarkable that people would take that chance. But yeah, I think in the warmer weather, we have a better shot, but it's not, it's not 100% is the bottom line. I have a question. Sure. Uh, my children who are in their 40s, 
of course, have been after me and worried about me. Yeah. What about them? Should they be trying to get pre-registered now? Well, yeah, I mean, eventually, if they're in frontline jobs, if they're in a job, you know, like a, a police officer, fireman, a front first line responders, people who work in grocery stores, things like that, they're going to be in the next phase. But the final phase, phase two or three, depending on who you read, is probably not going to come till summer from what I've read and heard. Where we have but can they get pre-registered? Now you can pre-register, it won't hurt. So but if, in you're, the if you're not if you're not in the group, you probably won't be ready. You won't be pre -reg you know, you won't be able to get it. Yeah, right. I just wondered if they should won't hurt. In the queue. You know, it's not like voting. You can pre-register often in as many places as you want. What do you got to lose? Wait, somebody takes you, you're wrong. Yeah, and that's and that is indeed what I did, but yeah, I'm wondering about them at this point. They, I, they can do, I mean, they certainly can pre-register, but I mean, again, unless there's some special circumstances or they, you know, every once in a while, some miraculous things happen and people get it. They're, they're, they're if they're healthy 40 year olds, they're not in the group that's probably going to get vaccinated for a while. Now, if we really get this thing rolling and they, we can really get hundred million people done by uh, in, in the first hundred days, then, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be sooner. It's hard for me to say, hard for me to say. I have a question. Sure. Okay, uh, two questions, actually. The first one is in regards to the Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. Um, I understand in one of their studies with the older population over 60 that have uh, underlying conditions, medical conditions, that the effectiveness drops much lower than the 67%. I, I, can, I can only tell you with the data just came out today. I have not been able to read it yet. So if you want to do this okay. next week, I'll, I'll, I'll have the information for you. I have not heard that. So okay. I know, I hope, I know the I hope FDA that's... said it was okay and it met their, their points, but I, I didn't get a breakdown. I don't have that breakdown. Okay. My second question has to do with the registering. I mean, my, I don't have a computer. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. I don't have internet. And so an out of state son registered me for both St. Mary and for um, Bucks County. I was going to say, um, how are you on this if you don't have a computer? <laughs> you don't have internet. <laughs> because I, I'm able to call in. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Can... You're on the phone. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm, I apologize. I'm calling in on the phone. I'm yes, ma'am, I can see phone. that. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, he registered me at both of those places. He used my house phone number. Unfortunately, my house phone doesn't have call waiting. I'm a senior citizen, lots yeah. of medical issues. And they don't tell you these things when you register, but I, I have found out since St. Mary calls you three times, they don't get you, you're out. I, when I, I tried know. to call in to get either find out if that had happened to me and had kicked me out or whether I could change my number. Basically what I found out was that even though I, he had registered me as soon as you guys opened up your site, um, that they, they re-registered me and now I'm down at the bottom of the, of the list. Well, well I'll tell you what. It was true with the Department of Health. I'll, I'll tell you what, um, I, I can't promise you anything uh, but if, if somebody, if, if some, one of you will send me, will send me your name and con and your phone number, uh, I will, I will contact the people I know at St. Mary's who are running the program and see if I can do anything. I'm not going to promise, but I will certainly try. And I know the, the young lady who's running the program is terribly sympathetic to everybody trying to get on. And if maybe if I, you know, I, maybe I can help. We'll see. I, I, I don't know, but we'll see. I'll see what I can do. I would appreciate that so much, Doctor. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. Yeah, I'll, I'll do try. that. I'll send you that so information. You, if somebody, Janine, if you just, if you can get that info and just- I will, I'll, I'll email it to, it to you. Email it to me and I'll see what sure. I can do. Okay, so we are at seven o'clock. And uh, Dr. Gorin has his family anxiously waiting me. for him. <laughs> and I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know this was going to happen, but that's okay. We understand. It You're it, it. Everyone's busy, and when you get the chance for family, that's what counts. So, so um, thank you, everybody, and right. uh, we appreciate it. And everyone, have a good evening. And thanks right. again, Stay Dr. Gorin. Wear your masks.
Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.